Hi guys, I'm back with another Things I Wish I Knew Before Collecting Manga video. I made my original video about a year ago, so I thought it was finally time to revisit that, so if you guys haven't checked that out yet, definitely go check out that first. For these tips, I consulted my own experience and many, many Reddit threads online, and also this amazing guide by Anime Corner that I'll link down below. So definitely make sure to check those out for even more great advice. So let's jump right in with our first tip. So my first tip is to organize your shelf based off of completed versus incomplete status of your series. So I really need to take my own advice here, but basically it gets pretty tough moving all of your volumes around each time you collect something new, and I'm speaking from very recent experience. So there's two ways to combat this. First, you can have one section of your shelf filled with all completed manga, while you leave the later half of your shelf for unfinished series. So therefore, when you haul some more volumes, you're only moving half of your shelf as opposed to moving all of your shelf. The second method that is just to leave some space in your shelves as you organize them for your unfinished series so you can just fill those in after you get more volumes. And I literally did not do either of these in these past two years of collecting. So every time I got a new haul, got new volumes, I would spend 20 plus minutes to input one new book. So if you're constantly getting new volumes, I highly, highly recommend organizing your shelf methodically. My second tip is to double check the status of your series and the specific publication you're collecting. So when I first started collecting, I was completely unaware that a substantial amount of physical manga publications, especially in English, would actually get discontinued either due to dropping popularity, the publishing company itself, or the series would just be dropped on a hiatus or a combination of all the above. So I believe I had collected the first four volumes of Portrait of MNN without realizing that Tokyo Pop actually never ended up publishing the fifth and sixth volume. Other series that are like that are Zatch Bell, GTO, and Initial D. I'm not saying that these are not worth collecting, I actually really really think they are, but just make sure that you're aware that you won't be able to collect it in full in English. So my third tip is to look out for omnibuses. For those of you just first collecting manga, an omnibus is a collected volume of manga, and it can include anywhere from two traditional volumes in one to literally an entire series in one book. Omnibuses often help you save money and space compared to traditional single volumes. For example, the Death Note box set is selling for a lot of money, hundreds and hundreds, while the Omnibus Complete Edition is much less than that, and also more space efficient. There's so many Omnibus versions of series these days, such as Evangelion and Tokyo Ghoul, and many more, so make sure to do your research. All right, our fourth tip is very much related to this last one. Make sure you look out for different editions of the same series. Besides Omnibus, there are many gorgeous editions out there like anniversary editions, hardcovers, and reprints. So for example, we have the Sailor Moon regular editions, and then there are these gorgeous eternal editions that I really, really aspire to collect. Another example is the out of print drifting classroom singles, but then there are these gorgeous massive editions. And then for Death Note, we have the singles, the complete edition, and also the black editions. So definitely take a look into which editions are readily available, some are out of print, some are not, and also which ones you like to collect the most for aesthetic reasons or for space. Before we begin with the next tip, I'd like to thank Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Ugreen and their amazing Hi-Tune T3 noise-canceling Bluetooth earbuds are actually a lifesaver. I was so excited to try these because I've really been looking for portable and sleek Bluetooth earbuds to accompany me during my work days, so these have been perfect. This little guy is packed with the latest technology and offers such an amazing experience with Bluetooth 5.2, which provides incredibly fast and stable Bluetooth connection, as well as AI enhanced noise reduction, which may I add, worked so well. So my dad was outside sawing off branches in the backyard when I was filming this, so I literally didn't hear a thing, but now let me show you what my camera picked up that I couldn't hear. Besides that craziness, these Ugreen wireless earbuds have all-day battery life that allows for up to 24 hours of playtime with the charging case. They also have touch sensors allowing you to go through tracks, answer reject calls, and so much more. So with the immersive sound quality and active noise cancellation, sleek design, I can really say that these are now my to-go earbuds. And these are literally so affordable right now, you guys, so definitely check out Ugreen and these earbuds down below in my description box. Thanks again so much, Ugreen, and now let's get on with the next tip. My fifth tip is that you don't need a large fancy shelf or even honestly a shelf itself when you're first starting out. 
I started off my collection using a small wall shelf that I actually shared with a lot of my plushies. And when I ran out of space, I ended up using the floor and my desk until I could steal my sister's mini shelf. So don't be pressured to immediately get a brand new shelf when you first start out. Wait a bit until you have a better idea of how large you want your collection to be and what your buying habits are. In the meantime, you can use your desk, wall shelves, cabinets, or even just the floor. There are honestly so many pretty desk setups that I've seen, but just make sure that you're not stacking your books horizontally for too long because that actually may damage the spines. But yeah, take your time finding the right shelf for you and keep in mind that you don't need a shelf at the very beginning to start collecting manga and you can collect manga without a shelf. My sixth tip is to not underestimate your local library as a great resource. Your local library is a great place to borrow and read different series and also to buy cheap X library manga. I actually started my manga addiction in middle school by checking out so many manga volumes every week from my local library. I checked out Kitchen Princess, Prince of Tennis, and so many other shoujo series, and those were honestly my most memorable series to date, and I'm sure in the modern day that these library selections are so much more diverse and expansive. Libraries actually also sell their old manga volumes after a while for extremely cheap, usually for about a dollar each. They'll have the library sticker and stamps in them, but you might be able to find some completely out of print sets and other treasures. All right, my very, very last tip for this video is that stray volumes are kind of a trap. I fell victim to this so often in the beginning, and you can see these in my first couple hauls videos in my channel. I would see really great used bundles from online or just cheap stray volumes at the store like Half Price Books, and these volumes would often be $1 to $5 each book, and I always convinced myself that I would end up collecting the rest of the series later on. But then I never ended up doing so, or I would just end up buying a complete used set and then end up with a bunch of duplicates. For example, I have random volumes of Orin High School Host Club and my love story, and also a lot of spare volumes of Full Moon. And now I don't really know what to do with these. So whenever you see a great deal online for a bunch of random volumes from random series for cheap, think really carefully about whether or not it will be easy for you to complete this series later, or if it'll just bring you a bit more trouble. All right, that's all of my tips for this video. I know for veteran collectors, these a lot of these are old news and maybe common sense to you now, but to those who are just starting to collect, I really hope that this is helpful. If you guys have any other tips or advice from your own personal experience, feel free to leave those down below so that others can see them. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and I really hope it was helpful, this little part two. And if you guys are interested in part three, let me know down below and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.